Thanks for tuning in to our seller interview series. Up today, we've got an Amazon Kindle business for sale in the direct publishing niche. Created in November 2015, this business makes $2,968 per month in net profit. And the listing number for this business is 40833. Now we do these interviews to give potential buyers more information about both the seller and the businesses they're looking to purchase. We hope these insights are helpful for you in making a buying decision. We've got the seller with us today to go through the business. I cover everything from niche selection to traffic and monetization. Thanks for coming on, Mike. Hey, Greg. How you doing? Doing good, man. Uh, before we begin, just to give a quick summary for everyone out there listening in on this business. Like I mentioned, it was built in November 2015. Has a total monthly revenue of $3,359. Expenses at $391 for that total net profit of $2,968. Now that is over a 12 month average and with the sale, obviously all the content and files, which are the main assets of the business shall be included with the sale. With all that said, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Is this kind of your first one that you hit it out of the park? Is it one of many? What's the story there? Yeah. So this actually was the first time I tried to get into any sort of online business. I had been at my job for a while and I kind of found you know, Kindle publishing and I took a coaching course on it and yeah, I pretty much just went full on into it. And I think around this time last year, March, this became, you know, my full-time job. So I put a lot of uh, effort into it and, you know, established a lot of connections with writers and cover designers and editors and stuff like that. So. Awesome. So this is your, your baby then this is your first entrepreneurial success in that sense. Yeah, definitely is my baby. That's awesome, man. Well, congratulations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how, how did you come up with the idea of this business? As we were talking a little bit before the call, you know, this is a, a relatively unique business because it's a Kindle publishing business. You're actually writing fictional novels here in a yeah. you know factory kind of setting, I'm, I'm assuming. So how did you come up with the idea to start this business in particular? As we mentioned, it is a unique kind of business. So what was it that drew you to it? Yeah, so my brother had actually been involved with FBA before I'd ever heard about Amazon Kindle. So I was pretty much just researching FBA and different types of you know, Amazon business models. And I came across an interview with someone who had a successful Kindle publishing business. So I pretty much just went down that path and that led to where we are today. That's awesome. Uh, you just went full throttle with it from the sounds of it. Yeah, I did. I really, I was at my job. So I said, hey, you know, I don't really have much to lose here. So I'll just... uh I'll just put all my effort into it. <laughs> Why not? Uh, did you start yeah. off writing them yourself, or do you always have like a ghostwriter to do it for you? No, I did not write any of them myself. Yeah, nice. I just pretty much <laughs> picked ghostwriters, and I was able to develop you know a good relationship with a few of them, and so I was able to you know crank out books. How many books do you currently have? So I have about a hundred unique titles. I think one hundred fifteen, and. Well, not all of those are completely unique stories. Some of them are bundles. So it'll pretty much be, you know, hey, um, I combine four stories into one separate, you know, bundle. Right. But you have like a hundred different access points then, right? Because you, like, you have the bundle, yes. like say four stories, and then each of those stories are their own product listings as well, I'm assuming. Yeah. So basically 115 product listings. Awesome. Very cool. And now are they all spread over across one pen name or is there multiple different like kind of author personas you've built up? Yeah. So I think there's about, I think there's at least six pen names that I have. So yeah, the pen names are pretty much diversified based on the subgenre. Interesting. That is very intriguing. I'm assuming they all just have like their own Amazon author bio, not like their own full fledged like blog or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, there's not really too much that needs to go into it in terms of, you know, creating an author page and stuff like that. People don't even really look into that unless, right, you know, yeah. you're you're a really, you know, popular author. So, <laughs> Stephen um, King yeah, status. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Now, for someone that, you know, maybe they look at this and they're thinking Kindle publishing, what the hell is that? Could you just briefly describe in like a couple sentences how this business is making its money? Yeah, so in the same way that people who do fulfilled by Amazon, you know, create their own physical products and sell them on Amazon, Amazon Kindle offers a platform for independent publishers to basically get their books out there and have them published on the Amazon marketplace. And so, you know, prospective readers can find your book. They can, you know, either pay a certain price to buy it or 
they can use something what's called the Kindle Unlimited program. And what that is, is that readers pay $10 a month. And with that, they can read unlimited books. And so how an author gets paid with the Kindle Unlimited program is if someone downloads your book and say they read 20 pages of your book, you'll get paid for those 20 pages. So every month, a new rate per page read comes out. And it's usually just a small fluctuation. And it usually winds up being about half a cent per page read. Are these uh, like full novel length titles or are they mainly like short stories you focused on? Yeah, so there are short stories. I do have some novella type ones that I've experimented with and so on. But yeah, so for, you know, a lot of the shorter stories, people such as myself, they'll include bonus books with the main story to sort of increase the overall link to the book and so you can yeah so to offer more value to the readers and also to get a larger amount of page reads interesting that's very cool so why are you selling the business why not just keep it and grow it sounds like you have some kind of formula that you're using i'm assuming you're using similar to uh right to market kind of principles with these titles yeah i mean i'm not familiar with right to market but i did have a general formula for you know picking a niche getting the cover designed all that sort of thing and so you know, the reason that I'm selling the business is because over time I started working on uh, a different sort of business model. And, you know, while this is a pretty passive income stream for me, it there is a lot of opportunity for growth. And I felt like, you know, I was abandoning growing the business. So I figured it would be better just to take, you know, be able to fund my other businesses by selling this one and then give someone else an opportunity to, you know, really grow it. It's definitely one of the things we recommend if, you know, you're busy with other businesses, it's the perfect time to sell the business, still have healthy revenues coming in. So yeah, definitely. I can see that. What's the, uh, you already mentioned what's your plan after the sale, you're reinvesting into your other business. But when you, when you first began this business, what was the trajectory of it? Did you find when you, uh, first of all, like how long did it take for your writers to write these stories? And second of all, when you first got those stories up, did you see sales come in right away or was it kind of a slow build? Yeah, so you see sales pretty much come in right away if you have a good book. So a lot of these things are dependent on how good your cover is, obviously how good the book is, your description, your keywords that you put inside the Kindle platform when you're uploading the book. So just by doing all these things, you know, you can increase the amount of people that will borrow your book, you know, you'll catch more eyes and so amazon kindle actually has an algorithm which when you first put your book out it'll sort of give it a boost and then that will put it in front of more eyes and then you know it can start making money right away and then you'll pretty much get the momentum of the initial launch so when i first started doing things the initial launch it was a lot easier to you know put out a book and then have it take off nowadays the algorithm is favoring you know, you need to show Amazon that, you know, there's a lot of interest in this book. And so people are sort of moving towards doing longer books, doing a lot of email promos, doing Facebook ads and stuff like that. And so I don't do any of that. I just pretty much operate things as is. I'll change, you know, covers and do sort of stuff like that to rebrand and relaunch the book. But I keep it pretty lean in terms of, you know, spending and expenses and stuff like that. Nice. Uh, that, that's interesting. I have heard about the various launch strategies. I think it was a few months ago, there was a person that will like, you know, they'll write three novels that are in a series and they'll have the first three done and then the fourth one done. And then like, you know, they launch all three at once. Next month, they launch the fourth one. And they give themselves like a two months leeway to write the fifth one, you know, something crazy like that for a really manic writer, right? How long does it take usually for your writers to create these stories? So when I was doing the short stories, it would take only about a week to two weeks wow, that's to, quick. for the writer to, yeah, to push it out. And then I would send it to an editor, and then she would fix it up, and then I'll have the cover designer you know, get the cover. So, yeah, it was not longer than a two-week process. But, yeah, a lot of, like I said, a lot of the market now is leaning towards longer books. And right. I did you know, start experimenting with that, and then those do take you know, about a month or three weeks to, to get done. And... Yeah. So, I mean, I am very familiar with that business model and I have a lot of people, you know, in my circle and in my community that do very well with that, but I just haven't had the time to really expand into that. That's interesting. It's fascinating. Uh, 
all the different launch strategies that are out there. How many writers do you have on your team? So now I don't really, I haven't made a new book in, you know, several months. I do still obviously, you know, have contact with my old writers, but at the peak, I had about eight different writers that worked for me. And, you know, sort of as I tapered off, it was, you know, around two, two consistent writers. Interesting. You're not doing anything right now, but your expenses are still around $361 or so. Let's see here. No, $391. Are you using that for like some kind of promotion or what does that look like? So those expenses are, you know, the average over a year. So my ah. expenses towards the beginning of the year were a lot more because, or not towards the beginning of this year, but 12 months ago were a lot more because I was still making books. And, of course. So that's you know, reflected was, for the payment to the writers then. Yes, correct. And then a few months ago, I did experiment with about three longer books. So those are, you know, a bit more expensive. Right. So, and that's pretty much why the expenses are what they are. But now my expenses are just pretty much limited to having my virtual assistant pretty much manage my bookshelf and all of my titles. Excellent. So when you hire these writers, are you hiring them on a project basis? Like, all right, I need... I need a novella, so I'm going to pay you X to write this novella. Or are you charging them more on like a word count, like so a certain amount of cents per word or something like that? Yeah, so it's a cents per word rate. Oh, what's the going rate, just out of curiosity? So it kind of depends on the quality that you want. I found decent quality from writers that were doing about one cent per word. And that was back in the day. Nowadays, <laughs> back in the heyday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, you know, Upwork has made it, I think, a lot harder to find quality writers. But for the longer books, I did pay more for, you know, a high quality writer. And I think I paid around, I think I paid around 1.5 cents. 1.5 nice. cents? Yeah. That's still pretty inexpensive. That's amazing. Now, with this business, obviously, it's very unique and perhaps. Oh, yeah, well, it is quite different than a lot of the popular online business models out there, including the one that you are going into. I already have started, but is there anything you learned from this business? Like maybe one big takeaway that you're going to apply to your next business? I would say that <laughs> the takeaway that I learned was something that I could have implemented better on this business. And, you know, it was really to build a brand and to build an email list. So I was building an email list with all my books. And then the service I was using for a landing page basically went out of business. Oh, so, oh no. <laughs> yeah. So I had I have about you know 500 email subscribers, and then once that happened, I never, you know, really implemented putting in a new email list. So I lost all those potential subscribers. And you know, while it would be easy for someone to come in and basically just uh, put in a new link to a landing page and start generating more and more subscribers, it was something I didn't do, but. Looking back, if I had just done that, I would probably be in an even better position. This might be the same answer for this question, but uh, is there anything you did with this business that you wish you hadn't done? <laughs> might, it could, it's totally fair. It's the same answer with the email. Like, I wish I had, you know, had it not done that with the email, but is there anything else? Yeah, I would say that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sucks yeah, when that yeah, happens. I'll give that, I'll give that same answer. <laughs> <laughs> so moving into a little bit more of the breakdown here, when you do launch a book, or actually, let's say you haven't launched a book recently, is all your traffic that you're currently getting to this business just pure organic traffic, just from Amazon organic search? Yes, correct. There is a, um, I haven't done this in a few months, but sometimes I would do a Fiverr gig to promote my books, and I would do that, you know, right as they were launched. But I, yeah, I haven't done that in, you know, a few months. When it does come to a uh, launch strategy, did you have like a checklist? Like, all right, I do this Fiverr launch. I do these uh, guest blog tours or uh, different email promo services. Did you have like a checklist like that for every title? Yeah. So I wasn't really doing a lot of email promo services. I was just Kindle allows you to do a free five day free book promotion. So I would launch my book. I would put it on the five day, you know, free promo. And then I would have the Fiverr gig send out an email blast on the last day of the promo. So you do the free promotion to basically incentivize people to download your book. And then this shows Amazon that, Hey, people are downloading this. They like it. And then, so once your book becomes for sale in the paid store, 
then it'll have a good rank and it'll have good exposure. But I've found that this hasn't been totally necessary to, you know, still generate decent revenue. It's interesting. How stable are the earnings here? Do you notice any fluctuation? I'm assuming Christmas is big for you, obviously, uh, or at least I imagine it would be maybe a little bit after Christmas with all the Amazon gift cards that people get and buying new books. But is there any kind of fluctuation like that? So there are some fluctuations, and sometimes this is based off of Amazon will make you know, certain algorithm changes, and then this will slightly affect you know, the way that your books are read. So I think a few months back, maybe four months ago, Amazon was playing around with something called page flip, which basically allowed a reader to skip around inside the book. And there was some speculation that this was people were reading the book entirely through page flip and authors weren't being compensated with the accurate page reads. So this went on for a while and over time it was pretty much corrected. So that was a, a a minor hiccup. But yeah, I mean, as long as, you know, you're keeping track of your books and you're upkeeping them, then it's been pretty consistent. Do you find that the earnings are spread pretty evenly across your titles, or do you have to, like, just a few winners that are bringing home the majority of it? So I think it's definitely 80-20. So you know, 20% of my books are the ones that make 80% of the income. And so, yeah, I mean, it is kind of hard to predict which ones are going to be winners. And with that being said, just because a book isn't a winner the first time, doesn't mean it can't be a winner eventually. So right. what I mean by that is, you know, when you if you launch a book and it doesn't do that well, granted it'll make some money, but you know what you can do is you can say, hey, let me put a new cover on this and maybe put a better title on it and see what happens. And you know, oftentimes just from doing that, your book can become a winner. Yeah, with my background in fiction, and you know, obviously having an interest in the business of fiction writing. There's always that myth that a writer just needs to write like one novel and you know that's it, you go off in the sunset. But that's never the case, or almost never the case. And what you said there I think is really key for a buyer looking at this business, especially if you have pen names you're kind of building brands around. You I could see like maybe you have a book that is doing okay, but once you grow the catalog, the backlog of that writer to from like one novel to thirty novels, now that story might be uh, winning big time, right? Because people are loving all that yeah. stuff that the pen or the author is making. Do you, do you find that the eighty percent, the ones that are making the eighty percent money, come from specific writers, or have you found out, even at your peak with your eight writers, they were do the hit or miss as well? No, I don't think it was one writer that was really the best one. So yeah, I mean, it kind of just spans across all my different writers as to which ones have taken off and which ones haven't. It's cool. The, <laughs> it's fascinating. Yeah. yeah, and actually, I mean. I had a writer I thought was far and away my best writer, and she actually has the least books that have taken off. Oh, so <laughs> that's super ironic. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's really hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Fiction is a fickle thing. <laughs> yeah. So when you were at your peak and you were producing full on, what did that look like? Like, So you had eight writers at one point all producing their own short stories for you. Each one takes two weeks. So are you looking at like 16 stories a month? What did that look like? Yeah, I'd say I'd say I was doing around 16 to 20 stories a month. That was uh, pretty much what I had going. And it, it was a lot of work. And I was doing my full-time job at that time. So it was, you know, a lot of uh, late nights trying to organize <laughs> and manage and launch everything. But nowadays in the Kindle space, I would say that, you know, doing longer books, which, you know, you do the email promos and you do all these sort of you know all these sort of promotional tactics and you know building a bigger brand that would be a more long-term play and yeah i mean like i said i have experimented with that across three books and i have had a decent success so you know i can definitely point the way for any prospective person that was you know looking to see the road ahead but yeah that's what i was doing at the time and it this method still works today but speaking of growth you know for the new buyer that's looking at this business When it comes to opportunities, let's just pretend for a second you're not going to sell the business and that you had time to work on this business to grow it. What would be the least risky path you'd focus on to grow the business? Yeah, so like I just said, I would pretty much take the revenue that I was currently making and I would use it to make longer books and to, you know, seek out different promotional services and to build my email list as big as possible. So, you know, so I would have a 
a large email list, a collection of large books in a series. And I would also be doing Facebook ads to, you know, maximize the book's profit. And I did wind up taking a coaching course on how to do this, but it was just too many things to, you know, keep up with that. I just couldn't definitely put in the time commitment. So would you be doing the Facebook ads during the promotional period or just like always doing the Facebook ads towards it? It would depend on the book success. So ah. definitely during the promotional period. And then depending on how the book was doing, you can pretty much and how the ad was doing, of course, you can just keep it going for as long as you want or you can just shut it down after the promotional period. Now, uh, let's say you threw caution to the wind and you wanted to grow this as quickly as humanly possible. You didn't care about the risk. Is there anything you do differently? If going forward, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Like if you were just wanted to grow it as quickly as humanly possible. Yeah. So, I mean, in combination with what I just said, I would still continue to do the short stories and I would continue to even just take all the stories that I have and create more bundles. And, you know, you can do as many bundles as you want as long as they're, you know, unique. And there you go. You have a bunch of new titles that you can put out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, with you know, over 100 novels or stories, rather, you could definitely mix and match with quite quite a lot of themes. I mean, even, you know, co-author bundles, even though they're you know technically still the same person, just different pen names, right? But Yeah, <laughs> that is a strategy to when you're doing longer books, if you want to integrate two different pen names and you have two different, you know, fan bases for these two pen names, you'll do that that co-authored book to kind of combine them together. Definitely. That's interesting. Speaking of risk, what do you think the biggest risk is to a business like this that a buyer should be aware of? So the biggest risk is when you're on Kindle and you're doing the Kindle Unlimited program, you need to enroll in what's called Kindle Select. And what this means is that your book has to be available only on Amazon for at least the 90-day enrollment period. After the 90 days, you can choose what you want to do. But so you have to have your Kindle book only on Amazon and it can be on CreateSpace and ACX as well, which is the audiobook service from Amazon. But with that being said, you are on one platform. And so, you know, just in that sense, you're not diversified in where your traffic is coming from and you're pretty much subject to Amazon's rules. So I think I, just in case I missed that, did you say... Even when you're in the 90-day program, you can still be on the Audible program as well with it, or no? Yes, yeah, you can. Oh, you can. That's, okay. that's, still, that's still Amazon. And right. Yeah, you just can't put it on, you know, Nook or iBooks or anything like that. Yeah, have you experimented at all with that? Like, have you done any audiobooks? Have you put any of your books on Nook before, or just all still just Kindle? No, I haven't done any, any Nook stuff or any other sort of e-reader platforms. I have put a few books on CreateSpace. Fiction doesn't do that well on CreateSpace, but I do have a couple of nonfiction books that do sell some copies. I am aware, though, that fiction books do better on the audiobook platform that Amazon has. And I do know people that, you know, do put their fiction books on that platform and they do well. So also, if you did want to grow the business as quick as possible, that would be a, a definitely a great way. Interesting. But you haven't done any audio yourself, though, for your books yet? No, I have not. I'm assuming all your books are still just in the American market, or are you also selling in other English-speaking markets like UK and Australia, something like that? Yeah, so it's all over the world, actually. So the oh, Google Unlimited program, yeah. Yeah, it's actually in several different countries. You can buy the book from pretty much, I think, around like 10 different marketplaces, so... And the Kindle Unlimited program is actually, they continue to expand into different countries. So it seems like there's quite a few opportunities there. But for someone that's looking at buying this business now, like, what does your workload look like right now? Like, could you just describe what you're currently doing on a monthly or weekly basis with the business? Yes, yeah, so my current workload pretty much just consists of telling my VA to go in and, you know, fix the bookshelf. And what I mean by that, is you know after a certain time books will stop earning money and then that's pretty much the case entirely unless you're continually doing you know email promos and facebook ads and stuff like that so once a book pretty much stops making money and it's been around for a certain period of time i'll have the va go in and pretty much republish it as a new book but you know so it'll be rebranded so the cover could be changed the description could be changed the categories keywords stuff like that anything to sort of optimize it and then relaunch it. So you relaunch it as a new book or 
is it just like a new cover but the same listing product listing? Because I'm assuming you wouldn't want to lose like your uh, sales ranking. Is that correct? No, it, you do make it a new listing. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So my VA just does all that, and that's pretty much my workload is to just tell her to do it when I see when I feel like things are you know slowing down, and then that's pretty much it. And when you were on the flip side here for someone looking to grow the business, we're at the peak with your eight writers. What did that look like? Were you heavily involved in the construction of the story? Like, would you give them an outline? Were you involved with editing? What what did that look like? Yeah, I was absolutely involved in all the different parts of it because that's pretty much where you come in as the publisher is that you need to know the market and need to know, you know, what is going to sell the best. So I would come up with the the plot for all the books. I would come up with all the elements that need to be in the cover. I would have the authors do the description, but I would edit it in my own way to make sure that it had what I wanted. So yeah, I was pretty much involved in every facet of what went into the book. And I would do the keywords myself, categories, stuff like that. Excellent. And moving into a few wrap-up questions here, would you be willing to sign a non-compete with this business? Say like, hey, look, I'm not going to go and copy this business if you buy it for me. Yes. And how much support would you be willing to offer a buyer? So I would definitely be open to, you know, doing an introductory call or two to pretty much explain how I do things, what the best things would be going forward, pretty much just explaining the business and, you know, pretty much just do email support for, you know, a month after. And now obviously the best case scenario here for you and for Empire Flippers is someone comes in, buys this business for full listing price, but would you at all be open to like a split or earn out of any kind? Like say, hey, look. I'll give you 80% up front. I'll give you 20% after this certain period of training or something along those lines. Yeah, I would be open to that. Okay, cool. cool. Uh, obviously, his case-by-case case scenario, all those things are unique, but uh, that's good to know. Before I ask you my final question here, my hot seat question, if you will, so no yep. pressure, uh, a quick summary of the business, where, again, for everyone out there listening in, this business was built in November 2015, has a monthly revenue of $3,359 with expenses sitting at $391 for that total net profit of $2,968. That is over a 12-month average, and obviously with the sale includes all the assets, such as all the stories and contacts as well with the writers. So uh, with that said, my final question for you is, what is your best pitch in 30 seconds or less on why someone should purchase this business? So Amazon Kindle Publishing is probably one of the easiest and quickest ways to, you know, make money online. And I already pretty much have an established collection of books. I have access to, you know, tons of information regarding how to expand the business. There's tons of open opportunities to just immediately grow the business, like we talked about in terms of doing audiobooks, doing create space, creating more bundles and things like that. And at its worst, it is a business that is making money passively, you know, without really touching it. so That is awesome. Like you said, I agree. There is quite a lot of opportunity for expansion with a business such as this. So for those out there, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want more information about this listing, the link will be below the video that would take you to our marketplace listing. Now, if you're watching this listing on our actual marketplace and you want more information, you become a depositor today. It's super easy. All you have to do is click the button, make a deposit, and you'll be given everything you need to review. So, Mike, thank you so much for coming on, man. It was an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank you, Greg.